Hi guys, my name is Sabine and welcome to another video, my very first video of 2019 and today I will tell you guys which were my worst books that I read in 2018 and which were the absolute best. <laughs> Let's see, in 2018 overall I read 30 books. Last year, like the end of 2017, beginning of 2018, I made a list of like bookish goals which I wanted to reach in 2018. And I was wondering if you guys were interested in me reflecting on those goals in 2018 and if I like um, succeeded or not. So if you guys want to see that video, click somewhere here on the poll. I don't know on which side it's gonna be. And the last thing that I wanted to say before starting this video is that lately I haven't been in a really good mental place and that is because of university. I've said this in the past before but it's um, getting worse <laughs> at this moment. I'm not gonna quit university but I'm definitely gonna try and figure out a way to make it less stressful for me. Um, I'm not having a great time at university ever since the beginning of September and um, I'm feeling really, really, really stressed. I'm feeling so stressed that something that I really love to do, like making YouTube videos, is even taking me so much energy. So yeah, that is uh, something fun that I'm trying to figure out with like how I'm feeling, how I can like make things better for me. I'm finally making myself film a video again because I really do miss interacting with you guys. So how I'm gonna start this video is I'm gonna start off with my top three worst books that I read this year. I have read a couple of books which were just disappointing for me, which I expected more from, but they are not the worst things that I read. And then I'm gonna build that up to the worst book that I read, and then I'm gonna start from the bottom of the best books that I read and work my way up to the top. A lot of these books are like in my door in Utrecht right now so I'm only gonna be able to show like a picture of the book. On number three of my worst books that I read in 2018 is Flame in the Maze by Renee Adier. I received this in my very first fairy loot box in May 2017 I believe. I was really excited to start reading this like a Mulan inspired fantasy story. I read one third of the book and I found it a struggle to get through. It was really really boring and I heard very mixed reviews of people who said that it was very boring as well or I don't know if it's really supposed to be a very action-packed fantasy novel, but I started it in January and I finally DNF'd it in December of 2018. So I don't like DNFing books, but maybe if someone is gonna convince me, it's gonna get so much better. Tell me, but um, I didn't have the motivation to read it. And number two, I have A Wrinkle in Time by Madeline Langle. Lang, I don't know how to pronounce her last name in English. I bought and started reading this book because the movie was coming out and I thought the book was really, really, really strange. It was so weird. And then I saw that the movie had really bad ratings as well. So I was like, okay, I'm gonna like DNF this book as well. I DNF this book after I read over 50% of it, I believe. I cannot even explain what the story is because it's so strange. <laughs> and then my number one, the worst book that I read this year is The Truth About Alice by Jennifer Matthew. And this, for one reason, which you will see later on in the video, is really strange that I hated it. So Alice gets like slut shamed a lot because of certain events that happened, but um, you get to see this event from different points of view. And I thought that it was gonna be a little, like a really good book and I really like topics like slut shaming and feminism combined together. I did not like any of the characters. I didn't have any like feelings for them. I did find some stories of certain characters to be very like unique and something that I really haven't like heard of before, but I did not like any of the characters. It was super short and it took me a month to read. It got me in a reading slump, a book that was 200 pages. So those were the worst books that I read in 2000. 18 only three so that's not too bad at all now let's start with my top five best books that I read in 2018 and the funny thing is that Jennifer Matthew the author of my number one worst book that I read this year is her book Moxie is my top five on my best books that I read this year this is such a good feminism read about sexism in high schools and like a girl who wants to change it. She's rebelling at school making these magazines and like calling girls to make sure that these like clothing rules are being stopped and like slut shaming or 
whatever, but it was such a nice uplifting story about girls coming together and making sure that equality is something. Also, this book has one of my favorite love interests ever, Seth. I love it when there's like a guy in the story who is a feminist as well, because when you are a feminist, you are for the equality of men and women, and it's not man hate like at all. That gets people really confused and scared of the word feminism. It's not about females are better than men, it's about females and males are equal. It's really funny because that was why I picked up The Truth About Alice because I loved Moxie by Jennifer Matthews so much and then The Truth About Alice was like not what I wanted from it. My number four favorite book of this year is The Cruel Prince by Holly Black. I got this in my January fairy loot box of 2018 and immediately started reading it. This is a fantasy fairy tale, like literally fairies. We follow our main character called Jude and when she was seven her parents got murdered by this really like high fairy in the fairy court. She and her two sisters have been taken to this fairy realm and they have been growing up there but the fairies hate humans so incredibly much. The thing is that Jude really wants to fit in and one of her sisters just completely doesn't. We get to explore the story of like how she's gonna get into the court and certain fae which completely hate her. The feeling of this book is just really great. I think that if you are starting to read fantasy this is a really good book to start at because I felt like there wasn't any like complicated magic in it. The system wasn't too difficult as well. I just really like the setting. I ordered the sequel to this book and I cannot wait to read it this year. My number three of the best books that I read in 2018 was a complete surprise to me as well and that is The Upside of Unrequited by Becky Albertalli and why didn't I expect to love this book? That is because Simon versus the Homo Sapiens Agenda which Becky Albertalli also wrote was um, a little bit disappointing for me. Everyone loved it so incredibly much and I just liked it but the reason why I love this book so 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 much is that it was super relatable to me. We follow our main character Molly and she has had so incredibly like many crushes but she felt like no one has ever liked her back. I feel like it was her twin sister is Cassie. She is I believe bisexual or lesbian. I don't know if it was really touched upon in the book like what kind of sexuality she had but Cassie she got a girlfriend and Cassie's girlfriend also wants to like couple Molly with one of her friends and it's all about self-love, finding love, and how you get to deal with that in like family situations as well. This is also really funny for me now since I have a boyfriend because I feel like everyone kind of has to deal with when finding someone that you really really like and like falling in love and having a boyfriend or girlfriend or whatever you have to find a good way to combine it with family and friends and school. It was a lot of fun, had great great messages in it as well. I found so many good quotes. Now I really want to read everything by Becky Albertalli. Oh my god I'm so excited for my number two and these are actually like two books on my number two. They're in the same series. I finally finished a book series guys like that doesn't happen with me like at all so I'm really proud of myself. These are Traitor to the Throne and Hero at the Fall by Alwyn Hamilton. These are book two and three in the Rebel of the Sands trilogy which is 100% my favorite trilogy of all time. I mean, if you haven't heard me talking about Rebel of the Sands, then you haven't been following me for a long, long time because Rebel of the Sands is my favorite book of all time. It's so good. It is a fantasy story like set in a Middle Eastern setting and it's all about this girl who has been living in a really like boring town with her aunt and her uncle. They have been so, so, so rude at her all of her life and she wants to flee this town and then all of a sudden this stranger comes along her way and she gets like picked up by him and that's where the story starts off but there is so much more like magic and guns and action and oh relationships betrayal these are really quite big like 500 pages 600 pages each and i flew through them these characters are so deep in my heart i'm just so excited to start talking about my number one favorite book of this year and that is the exact opposite of okay by laura Stephen. ever since i read this book in March after I bought it in Dublin with my mom. I cannot stop talking about this. I have recommended this book to so many of my friends and a lot of my friends have actually bought it. They are all loving it as well. Why I love this book so much is definitely a hundred percent the humor. I've never laughed out loud with a book. Like never, I swear. And with this book, I laughed out loud pretty much almost every single page. She has a talent that Laura. So in the exact opposite of okay, we follow Izzy, our main character, and she has hooked up with two guys on one night. And someone has taken pictures of her while doing that and posted it on a website. Together with her best friend, she starts to like try and find out who posted these pictures on the internet. And it is 
full of humor and slut shaming and dealing with that and feminism as well. I feel like there's sort of a pattern in the books that I really really like. I just cannot recommend a book enough than this one. It's so funny and it deals with such an important message. Someone is calling me. Oi oi! Okay, that was my boyfriend calling. I don't know where I left off the story, but just read this book. So let me know in the comments down below which were your worst and favorite books of 2018. I am really, really excited to get to know all of your answers. If you guys enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel by clicking somewhere here on the screen or on the button down below. You guys can also follow me on all of my different social media pages. Of course, I have Goodreads, but I also have Snapchat, Instagram, plus an email address. Links to those will be in the description bar down below as well. Again, thank you so, so much for watching this video and I hope that I will see you guys in the next one. Bye! Bye.